Hi there, I'm Wiggly Jane. Have you ever felt bored? Sometimes when we have to deal with situations that make us like not know what to do, we feel an uncomfortable feeling called bored. Bored is when we don't really know what to do. We have some things around us like our environment and sometimes even other people with us too, but we don't know how to interact with them or what to do to make the situation we're in more fun. Well, today I'm going to read you a story called Skippy John Jones that helps us learn how to use our imagination to take us somewhere else inside our brains when our bodies are stuck in a place where we might be feeling bored. So this book is called Skippy John Jones by Judy Schachner and it's published by Scholastic. We're going to join Skippy John as he goes on some adventures today. Wiggly Jane, Wiggly Jane, let's hear a story to brighten our day. This book is Skippy John Jones by Judy Schachner, published by Scholastic. Let's join Skippy John Jones in using our imaginations to go on an adventure. Skippy John Jones. Every morning, Skippy John Jones woke up with the birds. And this did not please his mother at all. Get yourself down here right now, Mr. Kitten Bridges, ordered Mama Junebug Jones. No self-respecting cat ever slept with a flock of birds, she scolded, or ate worms, or flew, or did his laundry in Mrs. Doohickey's bird bath. The lecture went on and on as usual. You've got some serious thinking to do before you leave this room, Mr. Fuzzy Pants, said his mother, about just what it means to be a cat, not a bird, or a mouse or a grouse, not a moose or a goose, not a rat or a bat. You need to think about just what it means to be a Siamese cat. And stay out of your closet, she added before closing the bedroom door. Do you think he's going to listen? But once he was alone, Skippy John Jones began to bounce and bounce and bounce on his big boy bed. Oh, I'm Skippy John Jones and I bounce on my bed and once or six times I land on my head. On his way down to earth from a gigantic big bounce, Skippy John Jones shot past his bedroom mirror. Holy guacamole, exclaimed Skippy John Jones. What was that? So up he went again and again it appeared. Then, using his very best Spanish accent, he said, My ears are too big for my head. My head is too big for my body. I am not a Siamese cat. I am a chihuahua. Back on land, Skippy John Jones climbed into his toy box and rifled through some of his old junk. After he put on his mask and sword and climbed onto his mouse, Skippy John Jones began to sing in a muy, muy soft voice. My name is Skippito Frisquito. I fear not a single bandito. My manners are mellow. I'm sweet like the jello. I get the job done, yes indeed -o. He took on a character role. He decided, hey, I'm bored. Instead of staying bored, he's transforming and ready to take an adventure. Hmm, where do you think he's gonna go? Ready to find out? Back in the kitchen, Jujubee, Jezebel, and Jilly Boot Jones were helping Mama Junebug Jones make lunch. Can Skippy John come out of his room now? Asked Jujubee. No, answered Mama Junebug Jones. Mr. Fluffernutter is still thinking. In fact, Skippy John wasn't thinking about being a Siamese cat at all. With a walk into his closet, his thoughts took him down a lonesome desert road far, far away in old Mexico. Hold on, did he actually leave his home and go to Mexico? He's using his mind and his imagination to go on an adventure. Let's see what happens in Mexico. Not long into his journey, a mysterioso band of chihuahuas appeared out of the dust. Ay caramba, who goes there? Asked Skippy John Jones. We go by the name of Los Chimichangos, growled, growled Don Diego, the biggest of the small ones. Who are you? I am El Skippito, the great sword fighter, 
said Skippy John Jones. Then the smallest of the small ones spoke up. Why the mosquito, dude? asked Poquito Tito. I go incognito, said Skippito. Do you like rice and beans? asked Pinto Lito. See, I love mice and beans. He might be the dog of our dreams, whispered Rosalita. Perhaps, said Tia, Ni Tia Mia, if he knows the secret password. Leaning toward Don Diego, El Skipito half sneezed, half spoke the secret password into the Chihuahua's very large ear. Ah, Chupichu! Bless you, said Don Diego. Gracias, said Skipito. Then it is true, decreed Don Diego. Yip, yippee, yippito. It's the end of Alfredo Bezito. Skipito is here. We have nothing to fear. Adios to the bad bambalito. Then all of the chimichangos went crazy loco. <laughs> Let me see your crazy loco. First, they had a fiesta. Then they took a siesta. But after waking up, the chimichangos got down to serious business. Using his paw, Don Diego drew a picture in the sand of the great bambalito for Skipito to see. A hush grew over the chimichangos, so great that one could hear a whisker drop. Alfredo Bezito, whispered the crowd. El blimpo bambalito bandito. How do they feel about him? See, si, said Poquito Tito, the bandito steers a frijoles. Not your beans, cried Skipito outraged. See, si, Poquito continued, red beans, black beans, Boston baked and blue, cocoa, coffee, kidney beans, pinto and jelly too. And now he comes for us, Poquito added. Por qué? asked Skipito. Because we are full of the beans too. Then Don Diego stood tall and in his most somber voice declared, yo, Quiero frijoles. Huh? Asked Skipito. The dude just wants his beans back, said Poquito Tito. And you are the job. Dog for the job. Me? Asked Skipito. Then all of the chimichangos turned towards Skipito, the great sword fighter. Hmm. But poor Skipito had no time for a plan because in the blink of an eye, a gigantic shadow darkened the landscape. The chimichangos scattered in all directions. Vamos, Skipito, or it'll be you, the bandito, Wolito, they cried. Skipito stood his ground, but his legs shimmied and shook like the jello, and his teeth chattered like castanets. Then, in a muy, muy soft voice, he said, My name is Skipito Frisquito. I fear not a single bandito. But Alfredo Bezito flew straight for Skipito until the bean-eating bandito hovered only inches away from the great sword fighter's face. Holy frijoles! cried Skipito as he thrust his sword into the air. What will happen next? Do you think maybe his sword will do something to that big gigantic creature? Or will the bambolito still eat him? He is full of the beans. Suddenly, bump, went the bandito, landing on Skipito's sword. And quicker than one can say chihuahuas, cheese, and crackers, every kind of bean came spilling out of Alfredo Bezito, the bambolito bandito. It's raining beans. Then all the doggies burst into song. Yip, yippee, yippito. Our hero is El Skipito. He's the dog of our dreams who delivered the beans and now we can make our burritos. They're so happy. But back at home, there was such a ruckus coming from Skippy John's room that Mama Junebug Jones and the girls just had to find out what was going on. They raced down the hall to the kitty boy's room. Panguito, crashito, papito, Skippito. Just in time to see Skippy John Jones' closet exploding. Did you forget that he wasn't actually in Mexico? I did too. This is some good storytelling. Then out flew candy, beanbag doggies, and the kitty boy with his birthday pinata on his head. 
Skippy John Jones, everyone cried. Hola, muchachitas, he said in a muy, muy soft voice. Mama Junebug Jones lifted up Skippy John and covered his head in furry, furry kisses. What am I going to do with you, Mr. Coco Pugs? She scolded. That night, when he was supposed to be going to sleep, Skippy John began to bounce and bounce on his big boy bed. Oh, I'm Skippy John Jones with a mind of my own and I'll bounce on my bed four hours. I know I'm a cat, but forget about that. Say goodnight, Skippy John Jones, called his mama. Buenas noches, mis amigos. What I love about Skippy John Jones is when he starts to feel that uncomfortable feeling of bored, he doesn't stay stuck in that feeling. He thinks about what he can do to go on an adventure even when his body is stuck in one place. That's what's so lovely about books. Books can take us on adventures. We can go with Skippy John Jones to Mexico, or we can go, ooh, in the books, not a box. We can learn how to take a box and turn it into all these other things that can make us feel unbored and give us some adventure. So the important message in this story is that your imagination, when you let it take charge, can take you on fantastic adventures. My question today, where will you go on your next fantastic adventure in your imagination? Maybe you'll take some time to comment below and let me know where you're going to go. Maybe you'll even write your own book about it. I would love to hear where you go on your adventures when you're bored and take that imagination to help propel you on new adventures. Thank you for taking the time to join me today. Hey, 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 go have some fun and play. Have a great day. Feel free to like and subscribe.